Congressman yes. West, is it time for the government yeah. to be shut down if the White House and Congress can't agree in order to force the president's hand and compel him to do what we hired him to do, which is run the government within the confines of the Constitution and only with the money he collects from taxes and other fees? Well, you're absolutely right, Judge. You know, what we have to look at is the president is the chief executive officer of this corporation called the United States of America. The president is the chief executive officer of this corporation called the United States of America. If it's a corporation and you are a citizen slash member of a corporation, there's nothing for you to be but a employee slash servant. We have two fabulous scholars that are here to talk about a subject we actually don't get to talk about very much which is corporations and the extent of their constitutional protections. And maybe ask the big question, how in the world did that happen? We have to my immediate left, Kent Greenfield, who's professor of law and Michael and Helen Lee distinguished scholar at Boston College Law School. Kent has a number of distinctions, including the fact that he has a forthcoming book called Corporations Are People Too, and they should act like it. Uh, you know your body as a corporation? Um, no, that's a whole story. We could talk for hours on this, but your body as a corporation. Of cells, you mean? No, no, no. It's called, and by law, your body, your physical body is a corporation. Mm -hmm. And so when you die, you're a corpse. Oh. Because, you're, because when you're living, you're a corporation. You are a business. And hanging out with that person is bad business. Right. Or who I hang out with is none of your business. Right. Because, because it's because your body is a business. Wow. And so you say, well, you know, what you're doing with, with her or him is bad business. Right. But, of course, if you get married and she's very wealthy, you say she's of good stock. <laughs> right? Words right. and terms are based on maritime admiralty, the law of water. Consequently, when you are born, you come out of your mother's water. Therefore, you must have a birth certificate, a certificate of manifest, because you are a corporation-owned item. You are a human resource. This goes back to the German Nazi concept that every human coming out of their mother's water must be birthed. And therefore, you have to have a certificate, a manifest, to see how much this individual is going to make for us in our new world order. You are considered, your body is considered a maritime admiralty product. Your mother delivered you. This is why if you go to Sears and buy a refrigerator, they will ship it to you. They will deliver it. And that's why you were in your delivery room. Your mother was delivering a product. Maritime Admiralty, you came down your mother's birth canal. Did you know, for instance, that your birth certificate is a security on the stock exchange in the New York stock market? Did you know that? On your birth certificate, all birth certificates in this country, on the bottom, it will tell you this is printed on security papers. Do not accept if not on full color security paper. Then on the right hand corner, you will always have a series of numbers, red numbers, printed on the, on the birth certificate. Those numbers are a security stock exchange number on the world stock exchange. You go to any good stock or office and ask them, check these numbers in your computer and see how much your stock is worth, the certificate. And they will check it on the New York Stock Exchange and find you, your birth certificate, is a stock on the stock exchange in America. Why? Because you are worth money to the international bank that bought you in 1930. We need to wake up. Well, what happens when you have a child? Is Your child is given a social security number. They estimate how many taxes your child is going to pay over his or her lifetime. And they went, they take that birth certificate and they issue it on the capital markets and they earn money on it. So what you're saying is that the birth certificate itself creates a monetary value on the books 
with the Federal Reserve? I'm saying something much worse, actually. What I'm saying is that when every citizen goes into the court system, they are not seen there as themselves. They're seen as the person who had their birth certificate pledged. You're there as a debtor. You think, as a parent, that those children are yours. But as soon as you get a marriage license and then you go to uh, the hospital and sign a birth certificate, um, then you get a Social Security number on top of that, you all but finished. The marriage license is, is another instrument that's used the same way, same with the birth certificate. The birth certificate is used so the corporation or the plantation claims the birth of the child. Like you get a certificate and it'll say, um, born in the state of New Jersey. Say, born in Camden, in the state of New Jersey. So that means the Camden Municipal Corporation gave you birth being subject to the New Jersey State Corporation established in 1844, and that's your mother. And, and that's a certificate where the mother signs the child over to the hospital who is in cahoots with the state under the Christian Black Codes, and they regulate, and they're like spies. They tell everything, and they operate together. Now, you look back into the Christian Black Codes of 1724, and you'll see the absolute relationship between the hospital and the state. All right? So the offspring of the womb automatically belongs to the state, and so that you don't feel uncomfortable, instead of saying slave, they'll call it W-A-R-D, ward of the state. So the, 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 the child being state property, that instrument or that um, birth certificate being that's their property under commercial auspices is transferred into a stock. And so at birth, that child, I think as of now, was about 20 years ago, was about 16000 so about now it's probably 30 some odd thousand dollars or representative 35,000 units that when the child is born and, and that certificate is put on them, that burden is already put on that child. So what they do, they borrow against it, project it on the tax that they expect to get from that thing during this life cycle. All right? So... Uh, last I was reading, it was $630,000. 630000 now? Yeah, just cause it, yeah, that's because it accelerated exponentially. And they have on the birth certificate mother or other informant. Yes, yeah. They will form it. Yes, and they're agents. The driver's license is one of the major instruments that is used politically to sustain slavery. When they gave you that driver's license, it was to incorporate you as a corporate person was not an instrument for identification. It has a picture that represents you, and then it has some phonetic writing on the front that sounds like the name that you have, but that's not you. The picture can't represent you, and the name does not represent you. That name represents a private corporation or what they call often a straw man too. You notice that grammatically it's incorrect. Why is it incorrect? You capitalize nouns. If you don't capitalize a noun, then it must not be a noun. But if all the letters are capitalized, it's not a proper noun, is it? Is grammatically incorrect if it's a, directed as a, at a person. Why do you think that was done? Do you think it's accidental? The fact that it expires proves what to you relative to identity? Does your identity expire? Well, why does your identity expire with the driver's license? Because it's not an identification. It's a proof of contract. It's a prima facie instrument used to regulate your economy. They listed you as Negroes, Blacks, and Colors as corporations and list you as foreigners and that your working is a corporate activity for capital gains. By you being Smith, Jones, and Johnson, it automatically puts you as a ward of the state so they can impose upon you that license in the first place. You're actually paying a foreign European who you keep calling white and claiming him to be the sovereign of the land, which he's actually a foreigner, who lists you as a foreigner and then lists you as a corporation under his name because you've been using his name and you ain't gave it back to them, which makes you legally bound to them. And then you made a contract of moving or driving in this artificiality and they constantly charge you or make up laws to actually extort from you on a consistent basis. And when you don't pay them, they take back their property, which you turn around and list it and register to them in the first place.